Microsoft Campus, we're going to have a kilo of uh, co-pilot and how it can assist them, what he can do. Um, and it's not a tea option actually. Be careful with your coach, Hold on. <laughs> so you're excited for Microsoft? Yeah. First time? It's the first time I'm on the phone, The choice that done. Microsoft headquarters in Reading. We were here for the Microsoft collaboration. So Microsoft are helping their partners like us to be able to give their services to non-profits. Um, and as part of that, we've come along to the Microsoft headquarters for a, uh, a day of understanding and knowledge on what we can offer and the different services that are available to be able to give to non-profits and charities here in the UK. Yes, it was. I mean, that guy that drew 90 percent. Jesus, and, and he's 75 percent non-profit. Yeah, no. So we need to get. Well, I have notes. We need to get the marketing out for non-profit non and yeah. get them in because they are they're they're badly serviced. Yeah, especially in the UK, they're extremely badly serviced, and that Microsoft are now offering not only free softwares but things like uh, free assessments. Yeah. to run on their systems. It's very true, actually, what they were saying in one of those statements, might have been when the American uh, chick from Denver was talking, yeah. was about being solution providers, not selling yeah. licenses. We don't sell SKUs. No. We sell a solution to a problem. And actually understanding the real, their problem and about Provided they package them to go, okay, so sitting down with them, understanding exactly what their pain points are, and then explaining, okay, we're going to provide you a Microsoft infrastructure that is going to take those pain points away. Make it easy, make it simple, but the moment you pull Microsoft into the conversation, that's... I want to look at the Power Virtual Agent. Yeah, I took that a note. Really cool. I took a note uh, of that because I was like, hmm, that's, that's interesting. And I like the fact I didn't understand that in chat, 
under the enterprise is locked down to your tenancy. Well, that's the thing that I already saw that meets your thing. I saw that as this is chat GPT. Chat GPT or Bing Chat? The that's using chat GPT. Right. So Whereas like, if she uses Bing Chat, it locks all of the conversations within. Enterprise, because they already have the previous subscription. They already have it. Yes, but it locks in within their tenancy. Yes. So yes. any data you put into it, it doesn't yeah. go out to the wider world. And that's why when I open up a document from an email, yeah. it opens in Edge with the email that it came with in the panel. Right. Actually, the engineer has said for all of you properly and licenses, but won't be using Bing chat. Yeah. Because it all stays within our thing. Within our thing. Yeah. That's a security thing, but see, uh, well, the chat GPT is still better. When making sense over how the your ecosystem should look before you put Copilot into it. That's 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 difficult for lots of us, even for us. Yeah, 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 I know. But it is very true. If you throw AI into it when it's not, you're going to end up with cases like the guy was talking earlier on, where he asked for something and it pulled you back a document from five bloody years ago. Yeah. Or you haven't got the right security levels in place, a junior is going to be able to pull out accounts finance information. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of, they don't have layers of security in them. So you have to put layers of security. That's, that opens a very good question that we didn't address it. What? Because when you went to the pilot, was stopping anybody to go show me the invoice from there or show me the because it's on yeah. security groups and levels. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, or what they're allowed to see in data. The, so, the problem that we have, and lots of people will have, is time. Time to allocate to the cleansing. Nobody wants to do that uh, because they don't have the time. But at least find it. Uh, it's, what, it's one of those things that has to be built into the, the process or the, the preparation for wanting to use Copilot and AI is you have to have things data, relevant, up-to-date yeah. data. They, they will not know how to use it. Oh, no. They're like, what's this? And then you're going to f*** up and be like, oh, Jeff, I asked the AI, which AI, chat GPT, yeah? Uh, yeah? And I put my data in, uh, and this happened. But can you have the privileged access on that AI as well, so you can't ask it? So now you can't have privileged access to your data that's in Copilot. So privileged access would be inside Copilot. Those that have access to the data can gain access. Those that don't will not get the answer. Uh, but on the uh, Sam Altman Dev Day presentation that we were listening to this morning, he talks about which is the bit we stopped at when we were when we finished listening. Was he was talking about you can now have build your own GPTs, right? And your own GPTs are sandboxed with your information that they can get access to. Now, whether I trust that or not is a different story, right? Because we don't train it, our, our language models on your data. Mm. <sighs> but, 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 here, Do I problem. believe that? Probably not, because how are their language models grown so fast? How do you get something to learn fast, you give it away for fucking free. And right? also is using the, the mini chat GPT will use the main API. So the information that you're using your self-built uh, chat GPT will go to the parent API, which is in the chat GPT. So the data is still gonna go there. Yeah. So the lion.